YT Dan Duel Links is sponsored by viewers like you. Support the channel directly by becoming a member. Ah yes, what's going on my boys? YT Dan back at it again with another Duel Links video. And today we're gonna be doing something a little bit different. We're gonna be having a card analysis. So I'm gonna be making more videos like this are a little more informative to help improve your gameplay. So if you're trying to get better in terms of dueling against the meta, playing against, you know, playing with your rogue style deck or even playing in different Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Links tournaments or the KC Cup, you'll need videos like this. So make sure you hit the subscribe button to catch videos like this all the time. But without further ado, let's just jump into it. So in my last video, we talked about Fissure and I was talking about why this was a good card for Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Links and how it could actually influence and change the game. Everyone didn't agree with that, which is fine, but I do want to kind of point out some things because I saw some points made in the comment section that I didn't necessarily think were um, correct. Basically, people were making unfair comparisons to Fissure and other cards in Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Links that destroy cards, so I wanted to make some clarification on why Fissure is the superior card in terms of monster destruction and why you should consider at least putting one in your deck depending on your style. So eons ago, if you guys don't remember, there was no monster destruction. And for a long time, I was one of those people who would complain that without any monster destruction, it's really easy to set the meta up in a very uh, unfair way. It's pretty much easy to set up this archetype or monsters or combo where it's pretty much either impossible to hop over or really hard to hop over because there's no easy monster destruction so far all of the monster destruction has been locked behind different archetypes this isn't the best example but i'm using dark world lightning you know just to give you an, a preface and an example a lot of the monster destruction comes within a different archetype and without also being in an archetype, it has some type of weird stipulation or condition like Dark World Lightning, for example, you can only target a set card on the field and you have to discard a card. So that's pretty restrictive, but it is a little bit different because you know, you're talking about destroying a phase down, but Dark World Lightning is a card that is of an example that's within an archetype, but then you have a counterpart that's a generic card like Nobleman of Crossout, which will let you target a phase down card, destroy it and banish it and if it's a flip effect monster, you know, you can get the rest of them up out of the deck, which is decent, but again, not worth it. And both of these cards are URs that are, um, I think pretty much in large scale main boxes. So it, at this point, I think it's pretty much hard to get these cards, but you don't really need these cards. But the main argument was for cards like Herald of the Abyss and also Offering to the Doomed. People will say, why run Fissure? you know, when you can run Herald of the Abyss or Offering to the Doomed and people already don't play those cards. So why is Fissure even worth it? Well, I'll tell you my boys. Yesterday I had my live stream and I finally got to test out Fissure. Like many people, I often, I mean not often, I just kind of forgot about it. And even though I had been talking about it and I got three and I was ready to use it, when it came time to build a deck, I've been so set in my mind to not include cards like Fissure. I just didn't do it, I forgot. But then when I remembered, I added in one Fissure in place of my Forbidden Lance. Now, Forbidden Lance is a card that helps to prevent your opponent from using spells and traps against you. So switching out Fissure might not have been the best choice, but in the deck that I was using yesterday, um, using a spell card was just the goal in that space. So Offering to the Doomed is an, easy to use card it just says target a face up monster destroy that card and you skip your draw phase now if you're playing a certain kind of deck this spell is awesome you know if you're playing an otk style deck or you're playing a kamakuri deck or you're playing some other deck that would or skill that would cause you to not be able to draw like restart um using offerings to doom is great because you can't skip um multiple draw phases unless the card says that um, what happens is the skips kind of stack. So if you play two cards that skip draw phase and you activate your skill and it skips draw phase, you're only gonna skip one draw phase. You're not gonna skip three draw phases. So people were using offerings to the doomed, but 
now that fissure is out you know why why you know why bother using offering to the doomed if you have your opponent has dragon spirit of white on the field and you activate offering to the doom targeting dragon spirit of white your opponent can use the effect to get rid of it and summon the blue eyes right also why would you play offerings to the doom against a dragon spirit of white you wouldn't because you know that they can drop it out and summon a blue eyes well with fissure they can't escape you activate fissure with dragon spirit of white on the field they activate the effect switching out for blue eyes and then blue eyes dies as it should this is the power of fissure and then we're going to talk about cards like herald of the abyss you know herald of the abyss is a really good card it's very similar to fissure so this card says pay 1500 life points to declare a monster type and attribute your opponent sends one face-up monster on the field with the type and attribute to the graveyard if possible for the rest of the turn your opponent cannot activate cards or effects of that monster's name that was sent to the graveyard and you can only play one herald of the abyss per turn now Here's the reason why Herald of the Abyss fails against Fissure. First off, you're top decking and your life points is low. You have 1499 life points. You no longer can play Herald of the Abyss. Herald of the Abyss is a dead card in your deck. The instant your life points hit below 15 or 1500. It is not the best card because even though this card does not target, even though this card, um, it doesn't destroy, this card gives your opponent the choice and if there's more than one monster in the field you don't want to do that so in the case where i was playing against the red eyes deck and there was a red eyes slash dragon and a red eyes black dragon on the field both equipped with like two cards basically red eyes slash would have been able to negate offerings to the doom and if i activate herald of the abyss my opponent would be able to choose the monster that they would destroy and I'm sure that they would choose the red eyes so they can get the additional effects of grabbing all the additional cards and adding stuff to their hand. But with Fissure, it's my choice. With Fissure, I can destroy the lowest monster's attack on the field. And if anything was to change, I'm still going to get my minus one for my opponent with Fissure. Unless this card is negated, then it's going to take a monster from your opponent. Also, against Red Eyes Slash Dragon, Fissure kills it by itself. Someone activates, someone summons Red Eye Slash on the first turn, and I know this is an obscure, random example. But if someone summons Red Eyes on the first turn and equips it with three powers of the Guardian and passes turn, if you activate Fissure and they didn't get a chance to put any counters, all that shit is gone. Isn't that amazing? If you activated Herald, they could negate it. And if you activated, I'm sorry, if you activated offerings they could negate it if you activated herald it'd be gone just the same but you have to lose 1500 life points so that means more than likely you're not going to play herald in the same deck you're going to play cosmic cyclone so if you want to play cosmic cyclone and have monster destruction you're going to have to play fissure that's another reason cosmic cyclone costs a thousand life points herald costs 1500 you can't afford to run a lot of these cards you can probably run one of each or maybe two and one or vice versa but at the end of the day you don't have enough life points to support cards like herald and cosmic cyclone together now there's other cards that destroy things so we have stuff like sky striker uh jamming wave if you have no monsters in the main zone target a spell or trap on the field destroy it. if there are three or more spells in the graveyard destroy one monster on the field super high cost not good enough and this is also a sr not as good as fissure flashing flash of the forbidden spell activate this card when your opponent's monster zones are full destroy all monsters your opponent controls this is an excellent card but the problem is you can't count on your opponent always having three cards so this is a useless card play fissure special hurricane an excellent card discard one card just from your hand destroy all special summon monsters Who's to say all your opponent's monsters are special summon? Who's to say that they didn't tribute three monsters and summon Obelisk the Tormentor? Um, you won't be able to use Special Hurricane to kill it, but you can use Fisher to kill Obelisk if he's by himself. You get where I'm going with this. Parallel Twister, an excellent card. Get rid of a spell card to destroy one card on your opponent's side of the field, but it targets. 
it targets so it can be negated easily by most cards in the game dark calvary red eye slash anybody else that can stop targets hazy flame anybody who can stop a target fucking skull archfiend or like not skull archfiend like me uh uh archfiend's calling anybody can stop targeting nowadays parallel twister you would have to get an egg one to even do that fissure skip all that process blow the monster up the only card that I would say that kinda, kinda puts Fissure on his heels, that kinda maybe say it's, it's, it's a card that you might wanna use in lieu of Fissure is Super Rush Headlong. But you know why I don't like this card? You need to have a monster on the field and you need to battle. So if you gotta do both of those things, it's not good enough. Fissure, eliminate the problem. So it's not even close. This is why this card doesn't see any play. And then we got a card like Mystic Box. Target one monster your opponent controls and one monster you control. Destroy the first target, then give control of the second target. Why would you want to do anything like this? You wouldn't. Just play Fissure. So that's it, my boys. End of my argument. What do you think, my boys? I want to hear your response. Tell me in the comment section below. Do you think Fissure is a worthwhile card? Do you think you'd play at least one Fissure? But let me know what you think, my boys. And also, I will give you a word of advice. If you're ever making a video about Fisher, you better make sure you type in the Google Fisher Yu-Gi-Oh! Because if you just type in Fisher, it's terrible. Thank you guys so much for watching. I appreciate y'all. And as always, keep it dank.